Today we're talking about our hip flexors, the muscles that bend our thigh up and forward. Starting out, we're going to be discussing our primary hip flexors, which include the psoas muscle group and the iliacus. The psoas, you have a psoas minor, which is a long tendon through here. Deep to that is the psoas major, and then the iliacus muscle. All of those muscles join together and attach to the femur right here. Then moving up to our secondary hip flexors. First off, we have our TFL muscle, which attaches to the front and side of the pelvis uh, at the rim here, and then attaches to your IT band, joining all the way down to the knee. Uh, the full name of the TFL is the tensor fasciolata. Next, we have our sartorius, which attaches to the very front rim of the pelvis, a little bony point there in the front of the pelvis comes across the thigh, down behind, and joins the knee on the medial side right there. Thirdly, we have the rectus femoris. The rectus femoris attaches also to the front rim of the pelvis, runs down to the center of the kneecap, and acts as a hip flexor as well. So we're talking about the hip flexors and what that can do to your posture. So we're going to start with those primary hip flexors again, talking about the psoas and iliacus muscles. Remember they start here on uh, the side of the spine and rotate forward into the front of the hip. When they activate, the knee will actually flex and lift up forward. There you go. So that's your hip flexor motion. When they're tight, this curvature here in your low back, we call it lordosis, will be accentuated. The pelvis rotates forward. This is kind of a model of a pelvis here and in a neutral position it's about like so, the spine curves like that. With a tight hip flexor that spine curves further forward and the pelvis rocks. So we're trying to find a more neutral position for the spine. The problem with having too much curvature in the spine back here is that it puts a lot of load into the small joints of the spine and tends to cause a lot of pain and inflammation and over time arthritic uh, changes and damage. In addition to the iliopsoas hip flexor, we talked about the rectus femoris muscle. Rectus femoris attaches right here in the front of the pelvis and runs down to the kneecap. When it is tight, it also tilts the pelvis forward in combination with that psoas, resulting in that loading of that lordotic curve again. So correcting that uh, can be a challenge because most people, when they're very tight here, um, when they do try to correct it, end up bending at the knee to allow the thigh and the pelvis to line up. So it's always a, a good clue to see someone when they try to correct that position that they'll end up bending their knees. That tells us that we've got some tightness in the hip flexors.